Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. This is the story about the most terrible hair assistant. I used to work at a salon for many years that was very small. It was just me, the owner, and one other stylist, and we didn't even have a receptionist majority of the time that I worked there. But at a certain point, this girl, I guess, had reached out to my boss and said that she was attending the local cosmetology school and she was really passionate about hair color and she wanted to learn more and she wanted to like get her foot in the door, be in a salon, get some hands-on experience. Um, she felt like she wasn't learning enough in school. And my boss had her come in for an interview even though we weren't looking for an assistant we honestly weren't really in need of one but one thing about my former boss she loves education she loves taking classes and learning herself she also loves to teach others and share her knowledge I God, I love that woman so much. Courtney, if you're watching this, I love you. I miss you. I moved to a different part of the country. That's why I don't work there anymore. So I think she probably was just really excited at the thought of like having the student be there and like having someone she could kind of like take under her wing to teach things to. And um, I was excited because I'm the same exact way. So I was like, oh, this will be awesome. And you know, it's nice to have someone that can kind of help out and like do the dirty work that we don't really want to do like cleaning our bowls and sweeping up hair and like that kind of stuff that you know assistants typically do but the thing is and this isn't obviously like the assistant's fault completely when she got hired i'm not entirely sure like i wasn't there during the interview process when she was told that she got the job i, I wasn't there or involved in any of that so I don't know how clear my boss was with her about like, okay, I'm going to give you this job, but these are all of the requirements and my expectations. Because my boss was like super laid back. Sometimes she's like too easygoing to the point where then people can take advantage. I don't know like how clear she was with her. And I mean, you know, just because you're in cosmetology school and you want to be an assistant at a salon doesn't necessarily mean that you know exactly what an assistant is supposed to do. And I, I get that it can be kind of awkward. Like I assisted at a salon when I was still in cosmetology school. You, you don't want to like overstep or get in the way. Maybe it was like a combination of that and like my boss not being like super clear with her. But when she first started, I remember thinking that she seemed nice and I was excited about it, but immediately she like wasn't really doing much. <laughs> and she would talk a lot about how, at the time I was doing eyelash extensions at that salon, in addition to hair, and she would talk a lot about how, oh, she thinks, you know, she finds lashes so interesting and she'd love to learn how to do those and she wants to get her own done. And I think, cause my boss must have told her that like, once you're working there, you can get your hair and stuff done for free. I think she just got so excited by that and like all she would talk about was wanting to get her hair done, wanting to get her lashes done. So like that rubbed me kind of the wrong way because I was like, well, you're not gonna like get these things done on your first day. Like you gotta work a little bit first. I remember like in our front waiting room, we had a Keurig machine and like that's what she would do. She would come in, she would make herself a coffee and then she would just sit in the waiting room area and like literally kick her feet up on the table and just be sitting there, coffee in one hand, cell phone in the other. And that was the thing about her. She always was on her phone. I wanted to give her benefit of the doubt in the beginning. I was like, well, maybe she's like jotting down notes because literally I would tell her like, oh, hey, do you want to come over here and like see what I'm doing? You know, I'll, I'll explain what I'm doing. She'd be like, oh yeah, okay. And she would stand there and like after a couple of minutes, she would take her phone out and just be like doing something on her phone. So I was like, mm, maybe she's taking notes. <laughs> but no, I'm pretty sure she was just texting and like you could tell just wasn't really paying attention and didn't seem that interested, which was weird because it's like you claim that this is what you want to do and what you're passionate about. And like you came here, you sought us out. 
we weren't looking for an assistant. Like you came here because you said you wanted to learn and you weren't getting that in school. And you would think like you are here, you're getting paid to be taught things. It's the opposite for most people. Most people have to pay for this information. She always would be trying to leave early, which like we weren't there. I've worked in some salons, the salon that I work at now, they're literally eight to eight. This salon was not like that at all. I think the longest she had to be there was like five or six hours. Granted, she was doing school at the same time, you know, fine. But if it was like the littlest bit slow, she would always ask like, hey, do you need me or can I go? Is it okay if, is it okay if I leave early? I remember one time my mom came into the salon on a Saturday, which mind you, Saturdays are like the busiest day. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of clients in and out. I could understand on like a Wednesday evening if it's kind of slow and there's only like one or two clients in the salon. But like on a Saturday, you gotta really like be on your best behavior. She was in the waiting room with coffee and cell phone feet propped up on the table. My mom came in. She didn't even look up at her. She didn't greet her, nothing. Which like when you're an assistant, basic duties, especially if you're not licensed yet, you're very new into school, you're not gonna be doing a lot of like hands-on things with clients just yet. You're not gonna be applying color or, you know, doing the fun stuff. But like that's all part of learning. It's like you're getting paid to help out and in return, you're getting experience and you're getting education. And it's like, we all kind of have to do that from the ground up. Even when you are a stylist, unless you have an assistant to do those things for you, like you have to do that. Like somebody's got to do these things, you know? They may not be the most glamorous, but it's the reality of the job. You typically would need to greet clients when they come in, which whether you're an assistant or not, or you're another stylist and that's not your client, someone walks through the door, you're gonna greet them, you know? You're gonna smile, say hello. You're gonna ask them like, who are you here to see today? How can I help you? You know, like that's just courtesy. That's how you, you operate at, at a business. And then, you know, sweep up hair, make sure everything's clean, spray down the stations, clean the color bowls, pull the hair out of the shampoo bowls, get the clients draped with a cape, uh, ask if they would like a beverage, things like that. Things to just keep the salon clean, keep the salon running, make the job of the owner and the stylist easier. But yeah, my mom came in, she didn't even look up at her, didn't greet her, nothing. And my mom knew that we had hired an assistant. And then when I told my mom, oh, that's her, this is the new assistant, she like couldn't even believe it. She was like, I thought this was a client like waiting to get her a service done. Like I had no idea that she works here. Like she didn't even look up at me. And a lot of clients like, you know, had the same experience cause that's how she was. That's just what she did. Absolutely nothing basically. Um, I remember one time I accidentally double booked myself with a lash client and a hair client, which is, is you can't do that. Like I can't be doing both at the same time. So my hair client, I think was getting like a toner and a conditioning treatment. So I was like, okay, I luckily we have the assistant here. I'll have her apply the conditioning treatment and then rinse it out while I go like do this lash client and then I should be able to like make it all work. So like I'm, you know, relying on her. That's also what she's getting paid for. That's her job. I feel like anytime I would ask her to do anything, she would just be like, <sighs> okay, yeah, sure, what do you need? Like a freaking teenage kid that you're like asking them to clean their room or something, like just dreading it. So like, ugh, I don't want to, but okay. It's like, bitch, you're getting paid. You wanted this job. So yeah, I had asked her like, can you apply this conditioning treatment? I got it like all mixed up, ready to go. I was like, all you gotta do is like shampoo her, apply it root to end, comb it through, set a timer, and then just rinse it out really well after it's done. I come back down after finishing the lash client. Everything was a mess. She took the bowl that had the treatment in it and she literally just left it in the other shampoo bowl, like in the sink where we wash clients' hair. Like, why would you put that there? We don't even, like when we have our color bowls and stuff, we would put it in the back. Like we had a sink in the color room in the back of the salon. That's the sink where we would like dump things 
before we had a chance to clean it. You don't leave it in the bowl right there in the salon with clients where like, this is where we need to wash their hair. And like, you're the assistant, it's your job. It'd be one thing if a stylist did that, but like it's your job as the assistant to take those things, bring them to the back and clean them. And so I came downstairs and this bitch is just like on her phone, just chilling, not doing anything. I'm like, what? Oh, I was so pissed. And then I think I had asked her if she could help me blow dry the one client. Mind you, this client had has like very, very fine, thin hair and it's like pin straight, like the easiest client to blow dry. I wouldn't ask her to, you know, do something that I thought would be like too difficult. I thought like, this is something that you should be able to handle, you know? And she was like really struggling with that and like just didn't seem like she wanted to be doing it. So then eventually like I had to come and just take over and finish it because she was taking forever. There was another time she wanted to watch me do lashes on someone. So I was explaining what I was doing to her. Again, she pulled out her phone and was like not paying attention. And I don't remember like the exact order of all, like when all of these things happened. Cause honestly, needless to say, like she didn't stay very long. Like she got fired. <laughs> but I do remember like it was very clear from the very, very beginning that like she just, didn't have good work ethic, but I was like, okay, let, let's give her benefit of the doubt. Maybe it's like I said in the beginning, maybe she's not really sure what to be doing. And I mean, she should speak up and ask, but okay, whatever. So the one day I was like, okay, let me, let, let me just talk to her. So I was like, Hey, um, I don't really know how much Courtney told you about the job, but I thought like I would just kind of give you a little bit of a run through. Cause I know it can be a little overwhelming when we're busy doing clients. Like, you know, I've been in this position myself as an assistant. Sometimes you don't know what you should be doing. And she was like, oh yes, thank you so much. Because yeah, like I just, I wasn't totally sure and I felt kind of awkward. So I like went through with her and I showed her where we keep everything. I explained to her like, you know, what things she can be doing. You can be restocking this and you can do this and that. And like when we're with clients, you know, do X, Y, Z step by step. And I was like, and you know, if you ever get to a point where you feel like there's nothing to really do or you don't know what to do, you can always clean or like just always try to stay busy or like ask someone, you know? But one thing that's just like not a good look is to just be sitting around and to be on your phone. If you're gonna go on your phone, at least go in the back room where you're not in front of clients. Cause it just, it doesn't really look professional. She was like, oh yeah, totally. I left that day feeling really good. I was like, I feel like she got it. She was cool. Like after we had that whole conversation, she seemed to be a little bit better. Like, you know, the rest of that day. But then the next day it was literally just back to the same bullshit. Like it just, she just never got better. And it was just clear that she didn't really care, didn't really want to be there. Yeah, eventually she got fired. Three years later, I'd be really curious to know what she's doing now. If she ended up finishing cosmetology school, if she's working as a stylist now. To be honest, I don't even remember her name. She was there for such a short amount of time that I just don't remember. So I, I couldn't even look her up to tell you. I just don't think that this industry was for her. I don't think it was what she expected either. Anyway, <laughs> that's my little story time about the really bad assistant that we had. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you really soon in my next video. Bye.